rational antibiotic therapy and prophylaxis in obstetric and gynecological practice. Principles of antibiotic prophylaxis. Uh, the, the definition would be that it is prevention of infection in surgical wounds using antibiotics before surgery. It is important to remember that antibiotics will not improve inadequate surgical technique. They will not make surgery an aseptic surgery. They will not shorten the duration of surgery. And they will not prevent tissue from traumatic effects, from, whether from surgery or from the uh, other, other factors. Uh, risk factors related to post-operative infectious complications. Uh, our operation type, open, laparoscopic, it's a very different approach. The wound is much bigger in open, open surgery, so there is, there is much more, it is much more likely that there will be compl complications. Contaminated uh, wound, uh, there are bacteria, there are probably bacteria in, inside the wound, so uh, the approach is also very different and complications are more likely than laparoscopic or open. The use of implants increases the risk, uh, such as synthetic meshes, catheters, and others. The duration of operation, the longer the surgery takes, the more likely that is that the wound will get infected. Uh, hospitalization prior to surgery is also important because patient might be colonized or even infected with bacteria, which might be also resistant to some antibiotics. Uh, and other accompanying diseases that the patient currently has. About 5% of all patients undergoing surgery experience uh, post-operative wound infection complications, so you cannot avoid 100% of complications. The principles uh, are, are that the antibiotic prophylaxis is used in surgeries that turn from clean to contaminated, in surgeries that start contaminated and in surgeries with implants even if they are clean surgeries because implants themselves are a risk for complication. Starting antibiotics during infected surgery not contaminated, infected surgery is considered treatment. So if it is confirmed that the wound is infected then uh, it, uh, and you start antibiotics, it is considered treatment, not prophylaxis. And antibiotics used must be bactericidal because you need uh, a quick effect. They need to be hydrophilic to dissolve well. They need to be of low toxicity and able to reach appropriate plasma concentration. Benefits and risk of preoperative antibiotic prophylaxis. Uh, the benefit would be it, that it lowers wound infection rate, therefore lowering dangerous post-operative post -operative wound infectious complication rate. It lowers the wound infection rate, therefore complication rate also is lower. Potential risks are the bacteriosis uh, because the antibiotics are intravenous, they are systematic, so they also affect gut flora. Uh, the following would be that Clostridium difficile colitis may occur uh, depending, depending on the antibiotics used. Also, selection of antibiotic resistant bacterium, that is a possibility, however, that would require prolonged treatment. Uh, and selection of more virulent microorganisms uh, and medication side effects or allergy to the patient. It is recommended to use a single dose of intravenous antibiotic. Infusions should be performed 30-40 minutes up to an hour 
but not less than 30 minutes before first skin incision so that the antibiotic would uh, reach its target tissue concentration before the start of the surgery. The antibiotic needs to dissolve, needs to spread through the plasma into the tissue and perfuse the tissue so that when you are cutting through the skin, cutting through the muscles, then the plasma which is secreting would be uh, with antibiotic and would uh, perfuse the tissue even when you cut it. Additional antibiotic dose is added if duration of operation is longer than two half lives of the used antibiotic. And time must be cal calculated from the time first dose was administered, not the beginning of surgery. So it is, if the half-life of your antibiotic is 2 hours and operation lasts 4 hours and after 4 hours you should add another dose of antibiotic. Also if the patient lost uh, more than uh, 1500 milliliters of blood and if patient has wide burn areas on the skin as that shortens the half-life antibiotics because they are secreting through the burn, burnt skin and the concentration of antibiotic is decreasing in the plasma. Uh, administering, administering antibiotics longer than 24 hours post-surgery does not increase the efficacy of prophylaxis, therefore it is not recommended. And we have some Examples uh, for surgical procedures such as uh, vaginal or abdominal hysterectomy, antibiotic of first choice would be cefazolin, alternative would be cefuroxin. So the first choice is first generation cefalosporin, and alternative is second generation. They are all obviously used intravenously. For cesarean section, it's cefazolin intravenously. For surgical abortion in first trimester, antibiotic of first choice would be doxycycline, 300 milligrams per ounce, uh, split into 100 milligram one hour before procedure and 200 milligrams after procedure. If surgical abortion is performed in second trimester, then cefazolin intravenously can be used.